Hi folks, my name's Maud Mosley, my pronouns are they, them, and welcome back to Tunes Tuesday, a series where I sit down with queer 2S LGBTQ plus musicians and bands to talk to them about their music, their experiences, and so much more. Today, I am joined by Philadelphia-based indie pop band, Naked Lake. Thank you so much for being here. Would you like to introduce yourself? I know the whole band's not here. Yeah, uh, my name is Abby. I'm the singer, co-writer, and kind of founder of Naked Lake. Um, and my pronouns are they and them. And yeah, we're Philly-based. I'm a college student. Um, yeah. Amazing. Well, it's so great to have you here. And I really want to jump right in because just this past March, you released your debut EP, Dreaming Of. And yeah. you know, that's so exciting. I love the art for it. Uh, but Thank a theme you. throughout the EP is a sense of one-sided relationships, be it like unrequited love or a weight that is left on one individual from, you know, either a negative situation or even potentially a traumatic situation from how the lyrics are written. And I feel as though jokes and references to one side of like one sided feelings are really embedded in queer culture. So did oh my you God. Know, purposely or did they just kind of naturally end up tying together like that? Oh my gosh, totally just naturally ended up working because what happened is, well, for Sour Spit and Darling I Know, Jordan had already written like the lyrics and a little bit of a guitar track to it like before, and then we kind of got together and made it what they are now. Um, so they had written the lyrics to Sour Spit and Darling I Know, and then we all together kind of formed while we were practicing, I would just kind of improvise lyrics. And I always, every time I do that, press voice memo recording so that I keep it, because usually your subconscious thoughts are what roll out when you improvisationally sing um so I actually went back and we were like wow that was actually kind of good and smart let's keep those um so yeah it was it was it was not on purpose <laughs> yeah I love that I love that it was like so natural and you just kind of had that like coming through to you in the music and yeah. then I've seen you know notes and things saying that proceeds from the Dreaming of EP will be going towards top surgery, which is so great. I mean, I would like to add the disclaimer that I would love if people didn't have to raise money for <laughs> affirming processes, you know, oh my God, is, mm -hmm. you know, it's great that you can, but that's obviously an unfortunate reality. But how does it feel to be connecting the music you create to seeking an affirming process? It feels like very comfortable because I feel like what I do and what I put my passions into and everything and then bringing it along with my friends who are my bandmates Jordan and Grace and Rhiannon and Arik and Derek and everyone it really becomes collaborative and that makes me feel like I'm really supported um, and I'm not the only like we are all queer, all of us are. Um, so we kind of share an experience. And then originally that wasn't even the plan, but one time we were all hanging out. It was actually the day of our photo shoot. And Jordan is like, I was thinking maybe we could put the proceeds towards your top surgery. And I was just like, oh my God, <laughs> that's so nice. And so, yeah, so the cassettes we've raised about, I'm not sure, $300 or something. Um, and um, some of that money does go to the company who produced the cassettes. Um, shout out to Haunted Succulent Records. Um, but we get 150 and then I've raised from the poster that says help Abby uh, for top surgery around $1,400 so far, which is really amazing. That is so incredible. And I love that, you know, there's that big sense of community coming from it. You know, either people who love the music or like people in your band who care about you, like having that all come together, you know, that is, that is so nice to see, especially when you are like seeking something that 
you know, is really powerful and is really positive to have that positive experience attached to it is really incredible. Yeah, really. It's kind of like filtering out all of the negative things. Like I really don't want to be reliant on my parents financially. I always want to be independent um, for every single aspect of my life. Um, and I actually just gave a presentation on this yesterday about uh, Naked Lake and I was saying how we really strive to have a sense of community. Um, I don't even know if we strive for it, it just comes naturally and with that comes like a sense of real security and I feel like every one of us feels really listened to rather than just heard. So yeah. I love that so much. And then loosely related to that, I noticed on social media you joined in with others to celebrate Trans Day of Visibility. And in your post, you spoke to the idea that trans people exist outside of society's expectations and authority was one of the words you used. And I was just wondering, can you share more about what you meant by that? Because I thought it was really powerful. Oh, thank you. Um, okay, so the authority aspect and... Okay, yeah, so I am so, so against like a lot of the what we know as like authority figures like you know the assistant dean or you know stuff like that i have so much respect for teachers and everything like that but authority figures like you know people who decide things for you without really knowing you um and there are really good people so i just disclaimer like there are great authority figures it's just i am not into that. Um, I meant by by saying that, wait, can I pull up the post? Absolutely. Yeah. No, on the Instagram, right? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Sorry, I have to like, I'm very sporadic with my words. So yeah. <laughs> this is great. And it's even more context for, you know, the people watching, which is fantastic. Oh yeah, okay, so I said, I think the reason that trans and non-binary people are sacred is because of the level of understanding and development that we have done without any influence from outer society, other than the fact that legislation sucks and stuff, but I'm not ignoring that. I just mean that we as trans folk have developed all on our own with no authority or government. So, okay, I get, it. okay, I'm glad I looked at that because we have developed a community that is completely raw and truthful, not based on anything other than our valid feelings and our experiences with our body and how our minds interact with our body and how our body and mind interact with the outside world. Whereas I feel like a lot of times, you know, um, you know, until most, people come out as non-binary or trans or whatever, not cis, when you're cis, you kind of follow rules that are ingrained in your brain by the government and by legislation and by hundreds of years of oppression and repression. And I just feel like all that we are doing is creating something so special and sacred that comes out of pure truth rather than following guidelines. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think that connects to the like really important point, you know, that you see people make, which is the idea that, you know, trans liberation is liberation for like anyone of any gender. Because, you know, when trans people can live safely and express themselves, then everyone else can kind of live more authentically. You know, people who are scared. <laughs> oh my God. I'm sorry. So you know, just... start start shedding that a little bit. And I think that's a really beautiful thing to bring up. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that. Well, if you want to check out Naked Lake and their incredible music and support their EP, you can go down to the links below. I would highly recommend doing so. You can also support them on social media there. And thank you so much for joining us this week. I will see you folks next week. Naked Lake will be playing us out.